This is a Louis T. Network exclusive. Louis T. Welcome, you are in the lab room, of course. I'm your host, Lou. Thank you for joining me on the 2016 NFL Draft Prospects 101 Series. Your guide to some of the biggest and hottest names in the 2016 NFL Draft. We're talking wide receivers, and this next one, boy, he gets my blood curdling when I start talking about this next guy. He bursted onto the scene, at least my radar, two years ago with his huge season, breaking all kinds of records at TCU. And then turned around and said, that wasn't a fluke, man. And just so you know, I'm going to break all the records I set the year before and still do it with a few games to spare. I'm talking about TCU wide receiver Josh Doxson. The doc is in. Let's talk about him and why he could be one of the biggest playmakers of this wide receiving core in 20. 16. Start with his pros. Great size, 6'3", 200 pounds. It would have been great if he was 215, 220, but that may take away from some of the explosiveness that this guy has. He is 6'3", 200 pounds, and he plays like a guy that's 6'3", 200 pounds. Strong hands is the next pro. My goodness, you want to talk about a guy going up and getting a football and snatching it out of the air and doesn't care if there's a defender draped all over him, doesn't care if he's in traffic, doesn't care what the circumstance is. There's, a, there's one catch in the end zone where he literally just stretches his hands out and pulls the football in one hand. He doesn't care. Strong hands, man. Traffic, not in traffic, doesn't matter. He's coming down with the football. We're not talking about a guy with drops. One of the few guys in this draft class, well, you're not going to hear the word drops mentioned. That's because he doesn't drop the football. Strong hands for Josh Dotson. Tremendous body control. When he's in the air, whether he's got to contort his body to go and get it this way, when he was thinking the football was coming this way, whether he's got to go up over a defender and snatch the ball away from him, whatever he's got to do, even in midair, he can adjust tremendous body control for Josh Doxson is one of those things that I feel like separates him from some of these other receivers in this draft class is the tremendous body control that he has and possesses to be able to contort and, and configure his body in order to come down with the football. High points the football is the next pro. He can go up and get it with the best of them. And again, when you're talking about a guy 6'3", you want to see him go up because again, that's part of the advantage of being tall is you've got a height advantage. You've got a size advantage over the guy most likely in front of you. And so you need to be able to climb the ladder, use that height, that length, and go up and get the football where that smaller defender can't go up and get it. And that's one of the things that Josh Dotson excels at is the ability to go up and get the football at its highest peak and come down with it. And no matter the rates at the arm, no matter if they're snapping at the ball, he's coming down with that football, man. Love Josh Dotson. Wins off the line of scrimmage. He's a guy that immediately wins off the line of scrimmage. He's here. He's looking in at the football. And you really don't want to get at him at the line of scrimmage. I didn't see a lot of people trying him at the line of scrimmage. But he wins quickly off the line of scrimmage. Whether they're in, you know, press coverage or they're off. You know, he's winning at the line of scrimmage immediately because he's getting off. He's giving them an inside move when he's trying to get outside. He's giving them an outside move when he's trying to get back to the inside next thing you know you beat. And it's not a lot of wasted motion. It's fluid. It's easy. And he's catching the football. Physical at the point of the catch is the next pro. So, look. You can be physical at the line of scrimmage and win like Josh Dobson can be from time to time. You can be physical hand fighting as you're running for the football. But, look. All of that is a moot point if you're soft when the football gets there and it's time for you to man up and go get it. So what I basically just said to you is you need to be physical at the point of the catch. That's when it all matters because you could be a guy that can't get separation. You know, and, and that's the name of the game for receivers is can you create separation on your own or do I have to diagram some separation for you? Do I have to set these natural picks 
or can you separate from that defender on your own? That's what separates the good receivers from the elite receivers in this league. Can you separate man-to-man -man coverage by your lonesome? No help necessary. Josh Dotson can separate, but when he doesn't separate, when it is tight coverage, at the point of the catch, he's physical and he's saying, that's my football, man, bad, bad. That's mine, let me have that. You don't know what to do with that, homie. Let me get that, thanks, appreciate it. He can be physical when that football is in the air and at the point of catch, you know, as a quarterback, you feel good knowing that I got Josh Dotson on the other side of this throw. He's coming down with it for me. And he's physical and he will fight for that football at the point of the catch. Deceptively fast, I hate calling people deceptively fast because that kind of gives off an indication or it, it, it gives off this really vibey feel of he's not really fast, he's tricky fast. Like he sneaks up on you. And you know, it, it's a negative connotation when you say a guy's deceptively fast. That means you're not really fast, but you're fast enough if somebody's sleeping on you. And I, I hate to do that to Josh Stockson, but I'm not sure how fast he really is. I know I saw him blow by some guys. I know I didn't see that. I saw a lot of touchdowns where he flew by some guys. I seen a lot of man-to-man -man coverage where he flew by some guys. I just want to see the time for myself because you know when you see elite speed, like when you watch Corey Coleman run, you're like, damn, he's fast. You know, when you see Lizzie B run, you're like, man, he's really fast. You know when you see pure speed, not sure if Josh Dotson has that, but I know he's fast. I do know that. So I had to put that little term in front of it. No disrespect, Josh. No disrespect at all. But I just, it's deceptively fast until I know that that's some real speed we deal with. Run after the catch, yards after the catch. He's got the rack and the yak going. You call it what you want, man. He rack. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You put the ball in the man's hands and he's going to do some magic and some work with it. And you saw it time and time again. Split some defenders. He's off to the races. He's in the end zone. And so uh, Josh Dotson for me, just get him the football and watch the man work. He's one of those guys. You get it in his hands and he's going to make some things happen. Ran the entire route tree at... Uh, TCU and you know I hate even having to mention that when you're talking about a receiver I, you should be able to run the route tree from from one all the way to nine man you should be able to run the entire route tree but when you got guys that go to schools where they don't run the route tree they just run and, and play schoolyard backyard football you, you gotta mention that from time to time and, and so yeah he ran the route tree it's an added plus he's not a guy you gotta teach how to run a dig route and how to run it precisely and how to sit down in zone coverage. He understands all those concepts. You saw it on tape, so that's just, it's good to know. Highly productive. His last two years in college were phenomenal. You, you had a breakout season in 2014 where he gets over 1,000 yards, shows the ability to catch the football, almost 70 grabs, bunch of touchdowns. He says, hey, look, man, that wasn't a fluke. I just broke all these TCU school records. I'm going to do it again. So he turns around. And at the time of this injury, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on, 78 catches, 1,315 yards, and 14 touchdowns, and he didn't play in the final three games of the season. So the man was doing work, and really you could go ahead and say four games because he hurt his hand or his wrist early in that Kansas game late in the, in the season. He only had one catch when he went down in that game, and so you could basically say he didn't play four whole games and he did that kind of damage. This man was on a torrid pace to shatter all kinds of records and he had to bow out because of the wrist injury. So, dude is highly productive. So you're getting a guy that you know can handle a, a huge workload and get it done for you. And that, that number at the end was the biggest one. Love the yards, love the grabs. Give me a dude that's sniffing, smart, sniffing the end zone, smelling the end zone, getting in the end zone, 14 touchdowns. With three games left to spare, <laughs> that's doing some serious work. Let's go to his comments. Not a physical blocker. He's one of those dudes that's like, hey, if you put a guy in front of me, he's close enough in my proximity, plays coming my way, I'll get in his way. Best I can. I'm not gonna hold, I'm not gonna cost his 10 yards, I'm not gonna do anything foolish. But I'm telling you right now, if you don't pick a side and choose where you're going, I'm gonna let him go and he's coming after you, and there's not a damn thing I can do to help. That's so basically what I'm saying, if you're a running back. 
So you're a runner, you get the football, you better let Josh Dotson know exactly where you're going. So if you're gonna make a hard beeline for the inside, he'll know, all right, I need to cut him off this way, and that's the best I can do. I'm gonna put my hands on him, but if he fights me, I'm letting him go. But if you wanna dilly-dally, and you wanna, oh, I might go outside, I might go inside, Josh Dotson is gonna go, Ole! He's gonna let his ass go. Now you on your own, you gotta fit for yourself. He's not a physical blocker, he's not gonna, pancake anybody, he's not taking a guy and moving him two yards out of the way. You better make do with his block as fast as you can because once that guy in front of him decides he's not blocking me anymore, Josh Dotson is like, he's right, I'm not blocking him anymore. <laughs> and you gotta fend for yourself. So if you see Josh Dotson blocking for you, you better use that block as fast as you physically can because that guy's getting off his block sooner rather than later. I'm not really sure how he handles press coverage. That's the next con. And it's not really a con, it's more of a question. We really didn't see a lot of guys coming up in his face, deleting the airspace, and really challenging him for good reason, because he was smoking dudes. And I told you he wins off the line of scrimmage. So you gotta be kind of choosy as to when you want to step in a guy's grill and challenge him. I didn't see a lot of that. And you know, playing in the Big 12 where defense is optional, there's a lot of defenses just like kind of chill like hey man you do your thing we're gonna sit back here and give up 55 and when you're done just let us know and it's all good so i want to see what happens and he played against some sec teams smoked those boys like he did against old miss so uh, he's played against multiple conferences got it done i just want to see what happens when a cornerback says all right i'm gonna be a little physical with you i'm gonna lay some hands on you we're gonna see how you do with this and I want to see what Josh, I would have loved to have seen him at the senior bowl practices because, you know, at the senior bowl practice, they be letting guys molest you. I mean, guys be damn near physically assaulting guys in those one-on-one -on -one drills. Like, you got to be really physical because they got guys getting in your face, deleting the airspace, jamming you, grabbing you, tugging you because there's no flags out there. Nobody wants to be embarrassed. So I would have loved to have seen Josh Dotson in those one-on-one -on -one drills with the DBs because they would have been physical with him. And I would have loved to have seen him beat that press coverage and seen what he did with it. But he was injured. And speaking of injury, the reason why he wasn't at the Senior Bowl and wasn't able to participate, wrist injury. That's what kept him out of the final three games of the season. And really, you can say four because, again, I don't really like counting that Kansas game because that's the game he got injured in and it was pretty early in that game. But either way, missed the final two games of the regular season and then missed the bowl game, that shootout where they had to come from behind and win in dramatic fashion. Uh, so he didn't get to finish out his collegiate career the way he would want to. Didn't get to perform in the Senior Bowl, which would have been a big coup for him as well, to show off his talents. I don't think a lot of people are talking about Josh Dotson the way that they should, because I think he's one of the most talented receivers in this draft class. But we will see what happens with Josh Dotson. He'll have to answer some questions about his wrist injury and how he's coming along with that at the combine. And the medical checks out. The tape speaks for itself. You'll hear Josh Dotson's name a lot sooner rather than later in the 2016 NFL Draft. That's Josh Dotson and his Draft Prospect 101 Breakdown. If it happens in the National Football League, whether big or small, we cover it all here in the lab room. Come back and join me as I continue to break down everything. And everything in the National Football League. I got more receivers in my bag. Gonna pull out another one. See you next time. There's plenty more where that came from. While you're here, subscribe to the channel. If you want more Louis T, be sure to follow me on Twitter at In The Lab Room or you can like the Facebook page at In The Lab Room. That's In The Lab Room on Facebook and at In The Lab Room on Twitter. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so.